Hey guys, welcome to our last lesson. This is um, kind of a sad way to end the course with videos, but we'll, at least we'll end with an interesting topic. And that topic is in section 6.1 in your textbook, and it's called the area between curves. And you may say that we already did this, that we already calculated the area between, let's say, a function f of x equals x squared from x equals a to x is equal to b. But what we did in all those examples was we calculated an area underneath the graph of f of x from x equals a to x is equal to b, but we used the x-axis as the bottom. We said it was from y equals 0 to uh, as the bottom part up to a y value of f of x. So the bottom was y equals 0. What we're going to do inside this section is we're going to generalize this to what what is the situation when the bottom isn't y equals zero and the bottom is something else. Just to give you a reminder of the connection between areas and integration. Integrals can always be interpreted as an area. So if you have an integral like the integral from negative three to three of the square root of nine minus x squared, and you, you try to directly in, uh, solve the question by finding the antiderivative of the square root of 9 minus x squared, you'll get stuck, at least if you're using the, only the methods that we learned inside this course. But if you interpret it as an area, well, square root of 9 minus x squared, that is the top half of, the top half of a circle of radius 3. Going from negative 3 to 3 means we're looking for the area underneath that top half of the circle top half of a circle, well, what's the area of a whole circle? Pi r squared. Area half of a circle is 1 half pi r squared. So that's a valid way to compute the integral. Another way to compute integrals is using symmetry. So we saw in the last set of videos that there was a, an integral that was solved this way. Um, if the function is odd, so if f of negative x, so odd function property, odd function from negative a to positive a. So as a reminder, f of x is odd if f of negative x is equal to negative f of positive x. And if you check, you'll see that the function inside the integral there, x squared to sine of x times e to the negative x squared, is an odd function. So you can solve this type of a problem by symmetry. Okay, and then the standard way is just to memorize a bunch of antiderivatives. So, for example, memorizing that the antiderivative of x to the power of 7 is 1 over 8 x to the power of 8, using the anti-power rule. Or you can use substitution. So you take the expression, replace part of the expression with w, or in this case I have written here u, but it's the same thing, and then go through the necessary manipulations to complete the substitution, either change the bounds or leave the bounds the way they are, put it back in terms of x, and then you get your answer that way. And all of these are the same. They're all a different approach to do the exact same thing, which is to find the area under a curve. Okay, inside this section, we're, we just generalized the concept of finding the area between two curves. And the way that we started this construction at, in chapter five was we used the rectangle method to start things off. So if I wanted to find the area underneath f of x from x equals a to x is equal to b, I would approximate it using a series of rectangles, 
all the rectangles will have the same width. So we call the width delta x, b minus a divided by n, where n is the number of rectangles. And then we would add up the, the area of each rectangle. The area of rectangle is the delta x times the value of the function at either the left endpoint or the right endpoint. So we would compute that as a sum and get an approximate area. To get the exact area, we take the limit of the number of rectangles as they go to infinity. Each rectangle becomes infinitely thin, so our delta x, b minus a over n, if, if n goes to infinity, we have b minus a over infinity, so very, very small delta x's. And then we have f of x sub k, where x sub k is the x value all at every step along the way along the x-axis as we go from one rectangle to the next one. Rectangle 1 is at x1. Rectangle 2 is at x2. So different values of k. We, we then saw that this is equivalent to the antiderivative of f of x evaluated from a to b. Now, if we want to find this area that's shown in pink, so the area that's below f, f of x and above g of x, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same type of, of construction. We're going to say, okay, I'm going to calculate the area as a sum of a bunch of rectangles. I need to find the height of each rectangle. The width will be given by the same delta x as before, b minus a over n. And then the height will be given by something else. And when you look at a picture like this, you might be able to figure out what, the, what it is. So if you, if you wanted to, um, let's say, get out a ruler and measure the distance from, if I can get a laser pointer, there we go. So I want to measure the distance from the top of the first rectangle on the left side of it to the um, well, I'll pick the right-hand side since we're using right rectangles. Um, well, it's not drawn that way, but let's just pretend it is. So this height, or this y value to that y value, if I wanted this total distance, I'd just subtract them. So I'd do the y value of the function for the blue curve minus the y value of the function for, for the red curve, and that would be the height of the, of the rectangle. So our, in this expression, integral from a to b of something, this something would be f of x minus g of x. Here's a second way to see it. Well, maybe a more satisfying way to, to see where that formula comes from. So it, I'm, I'm showing here several areas. There's area 3, which is the area underneath f of x. There's area 2, which is the area underneath g of x, g of x and there's area 1, which is the area that's between f of x and g of x, and it's area 1 that we want to find. Notice that area 1 plus area 2 is going to give you area 3. Well, rearrange that expression. Subtract area 2 from both sides. So the area that we're after, area 1, is equal to area 3 minus area 2. We know, we know how to calculate area 3. It's the integral from a to b of f of x dx. We know how to calculate area 2. That's the area that's in blue. It's the integral from a to b of g of, g of x. Well, now I can get area 1 by subtracting those expressions. Area 1 is area 3 minus area 2. So the integral of f of x minus g of x evaluated from a to b. There you go. And you can skip all the summation formulas that are there. All, all that they're shown here just to motivate where the formula comes from. It's kind of like a proof that this expression gives you, at least for some problems, you're going to have to be careful with it. For this picture, at least, for, for pictures like this, that's the area between f of x and g of x. Okay, so as a summary, we're going to suppose that f of x and g of x are functions that can be integrated. So that's what it means when there, where it says the, the, that they are integrable functions. Uh, 
to find the area that's bounded by them by f of x and g of x from x is equal to a to x is equal to b and if here's the important part why I was a little bit um, cautious in how I was describing things if f of x is always above g of x between x equals a and x is equal to b then we can write the area is integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x that restriction in green may not always be true we may have a situation where f of x and g of x cross in between well, we'll have to do something different something to watch for so keep that in mind it's it's not the type of assumption that will always hold. We have to check that, is this true? Is it always true that f of x is above g of x? All right, first question. Find the area of the region that's bounded by y equals two x plus two and y is equal to x minus one between the x values of two and eight. So I'm gonna make a sketch. These are both straight lines. So the sketch is not too bad to make. We're going from two to eight. So I'm gonna put down the necessary tick marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll do one more, I'll go up to nine. Then I'm gonna color code the graph. So for y equals two x plus two, I'm gonna use green. And I'll put the, uh, let's see, how, how much y-axis do we need? Well, we're going to plug in 2 into both of these functions. We're going to plug 8 into both of these functions. If we plug in 8, I get 2 times 8, 16 plus 2. So we need to go up to 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Not perfect, but it doesn't matter. Just This is just a sketch. Okay, so this line has an intercept of 2 and a slope of 2. So I'm just going to, when x is, I plug in a few values. When x is 1, I get 2 plus 2, so I get 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. When x is 2, I get 2 times 2, 4 plus 2, I get 6. So right there, and that's enough. I'll just connect those dots. It, doesn't have, it does not have to be perfect. Though I don't even care it doesn't touch. I'll just make it bigger to, to, force it, to force it to touch. There you go. So that's the sketch of the first curve. Y equals 2x plus 2. Now I'm going to make a sketch of the second part of the graph. Y equals x minus 1. So that means an, an, an intercept of negative 1. So it starts off down here. Oh, use blue for that. And then a slope of one. So slope of one, slope of one. So there's this graph. And we're going from an x value of two to an x value of eight. And then I'll shade in the area that we're after. We're after this region here. Just finish labeling this. Y equals X minus one. There we have constant value of X is equal to two going up and down there and a constant x value of x is equal to 8 going up and down there. All right, next we can construct our integral, the area that represents the integral. So area equals the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. So keep in mind that we have to subtract the function that's larger. So in our previous formula, assuming f of x is larger than or equal to g of x, so which one's larger? Well, the green one is larger. 
We're just going to write f of x minus g of x and sub it in. So integral from 2 to 8 of f of x minus g of x. So f of x, the one on top, is 2x plus 2. g of x, the one on the bottom, is x minus 1. And there's our expression. Let's keep going. That's the hard part. Now we simplify. So we're integrating from 2 to 8. We have 2x minus x, which is x, and then 2 minus minus 1, so 3. So we're taking the antiderivative of x plus 3. Okay, let's take the antiderivative. We get 1 half x squared using the antipower rule plus 3x. And then this is going to be evaluated from 2 to 8. So we plug in the top bound. We plug in 8. We have 1 half of 64 plus 3 times 8, so plus 24, minus, plug in the bottom bound, 1 half of 4 plus 3 times 2, 6, and then simplify. So 1 half of 64 is 32. 32 plus 24 is 56. So 56 minus 1 half of 4 is uh, 2, and 2 plus 6 is 8, so I get 48 for the area between those curves. Because they're straight lines, if you, if you were really desperate to confirm this geometrically, you can split this up as, tri as uh, different geometric shapes, rectangles and triangles and whatever shape you wanted to do. We'll calculate the area of each one and add those areas together and make sure you get 48. And it's very possible I have a mistake inside my arithmetic here. So it's, please check. Please confirm this is correct. Now notice that some effort had to go into deciding which of the functions was f of x and which, is the fu which of the functions is, is g of x. You can always rely on the following to make this decision. The top function in your picture is f of x. The bottom function in your picture is g of x. Where Top means the function has the highest y value, and bottom means the function has the lowest y value. So that helps you with that selection process. What you're going to find is that every time we, we do this type of a calculation and find the area between two curves, there's a certain set of steps that we'll go through. Here's a, here's a, a sort of recipe that will always identify the top function and the bottom function will naturally come from there. We will have to identify the left side, so the beginning of our bound for the, the lower bound of the integral. It's always a lower x value compared to the upper bound, the larger x value. Then we put the ingredients together. So the, the, the part of the process where you determine what is it that you're plugging into the expression, that comes first. And it isn't always straightforward. You may need to make a graph. So this, these steps here might involve make a sketch, sometimes Solve for x coordinates. So, this would be a case where you're looking for a point of intersection or points of intersection. So, you may have some work to do for some problems um, in that making of the picture and sometimes algebraically solving for where, what the bounds of integration are depending on how the question is phrased.
Okay, so we'll do one more example and then uh, I'll go to a second, I'll, I'll end the video and then put the rest of the examples in a second video. So in this example, we're asked to find the area of the region that's enclosed by 2x plus y is equal to 3, 4x minus y is equal to 3, and the line x is equal to 3. So my first step is make a sketch. Make a sketch. Make a sketch. Okay. All right, so my first curve I'm, I'm going to sketch is y equals 3 minus 2x. That's just rearranging the first function, subtracting 2x from both sides. So it has a intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 2. I'm going to be really quick about it. I'm not going to go through a painful process of making it perfect or pretty. There it is. Second curve. So add y to both sides, subtract 3 from both sides, you get y equals 4x minus 3. So intercept of negative 3. And a slope of 4. There you go. and an x value of 3. And I'm not going to draw that yet. Because what we see in this picture is that these two lines cross, and possibly they'll cross to the left or to the right of x is equal to 3. Let's sort that out before we finish the picture. So step 2, look for intersection. It isn't just for the purposes of making a good picture that we're doing this. We're also doing this to find what our second bound of integration is. We're going to be integrating. One of our bounds is going to be x is equal to 3, but we don't know if it's a top bound or a bottom bound. We have to find the other bound. When we do this, we're going to set y equal to y. We're going to set those equal. So we have 3 minus 2x is equal to 4x minus 3. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, so 6, and then add 2x to both sides equals uh, 6x, and that means x is equal to 1. So I'm going to, I'm going to graph these again. I'm not going to graph the slopes properly, but I want to make it easier to draw the picture that we need to be able to draw. And, uh, and let's see, this is one it should be a little bit above that. Let's make a little bit. I'll make it. I'll do my not my best, but I'll do a little better than what I just tried to do. Okay. So they cross at an x value of 1, that's what we just found. So they cross there, and we're going up to an x value of 3. So I'll highlight that in green. There it is. And this is the area that we want. We want that area there. Okay, now step three, construct the integral. So our area is going to be the integral from a to b of the top function minus the bottom function. We'll go right to this, f of x minus g of x. Well, really the information that we want is what's the top, what's the bottom, 
I'm going to subtract them. So integral from 1 to 3 of the top function. So the top function here is the red one, 4x minus 3, minus the bottom one. The bottom function here is the blue one, 3 minus 2x. Okay. So we can clean that up, collect like terms. I roll from 1 to 3, 4x minus minus 2x, so 4x plus 2x is 6x, minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6, the x. Continue this calculation up over here. Okay, an antiderivative of 6x is uh, 3x squared. So we divide by 2, or if you want, the antiderivative of x is 1 half x to the power of 2, and then 6 times a half is 3. Antiderivative of the 6 is 6x. So use the antipower rule there. And we're evaluating this from 1 to 3. OK, we plug 3 in. So 3 times 9, 27, minus 3 times 6, 18, minus the bottom bound being plugged in, 3 minus 6, so we have 9 minus, minus 3, we have 12 as our total area. And please check that and let me know if it's wrong. Send me an email, post, post to the form, it's up to you. That's our solution for the area. All right, and we'll do a lot more examples in the next video.